from the sparkling city by the sea, Corpus Christi. Please give a warm welcome for Steve Trevino. I got tired of watching comedy specials on TV filmed in California. And we're gonna do it right here in South Texas. Damn right. There's nothing better than being home, man. I love this place. I love this town, man. Uh, I'm honored that you're here, man, and I hope you have a good time tonight because you're all gonna be on TV with me tonight. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I gotta tell you, man, I, uh, I live in California now. If you ever get a chance to go to LA, uh, don't. It's, it's hard for me. I have, a, you know, I have a Texas brain living in California. I don't mix. I, uh, I'll tell you this story. I bought a house. People tell you that when you make money, you should get into real estate, so I, I did. Uh, they say you can't go wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. I, I bought a house. I, I wasn't even being smart. I bought a house with the house behind the house to rent the house behind the house to help me pay for the house. And I rented the house behind the house to help me pay for the house, and... The people in the house behind the house, well, uh, they didn't pay rent. And, and, I, and I couldn't kick them out, because in California, uh, they protect those pieces of shit. Seven months, they lived in my house rent-free. Three months into not paying rent, uh, they come to my house, tell me I need to fix the AC. So I beat the shit out of them in my front yard. And now I have a restraining order on my own house. Uh, that wouldn't happen in Texas. Somebody, somebody doesn't pay rent in Texas, I could walk in my house, shoot them both in the face. And the cops would come and go, why did you do that? And I go, ah, they wouldn't leave. And the cops would go, well, you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Uh, I, uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this story. Uh, I was in my backyard uh, the other night at midnight in my underwear, smoking a cigarette like a man. And, I say like a man, because when I was younger, you couldn't get me to take my shirt off, but now that I'm fat, hairy, and married, well, uh, I don't give a shit, really. Uh, <laughs> if, in my, if I'm in my underwear and I have to go outside, well, I just do. And whatever flip-flops are by the door, whether they're my wife's pink bedazzled motherfuckers, huh? I'll, I'll slip those fluffy sons of bitches on and go outside. And I'm not afraid to admit they're nice. They're pretty damn nice. Uh, <laughs> I was outside with my dog. I have a dog, his name is Jax. Uh, so me and, uh, me and Jax were in the backyard smoking cigarettes and we were having our normal conversation about how much we hate my wife. And, <laughs> and then all of a sudden Jax started to bark at something in the corner and when I went over to go see what it was, it was a possum. I don't know if you've ever seen a possum, but those aren't animals, those are gargoyles or some creepy shit. And I don't know why the English language named it possum. That's too cute, okay? In Spanish, we named it tacuache. Because if somebody said, would you like to see my possum? You'd go, yeah, I think I might. But if somebody said, you want to see my tacuache? You'd go, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, put your pants back on. I don't want to see that. Yeah. And I went over there, and, and, and the possum, the tacuache, just went, ah! Jax left, my dog was like, fuck you, I don't need this shit. Because I thought it was a squirrel or something cute. Uh, I, I uh, went to the garage to get a shovel, because I'm gonna kill that stupid son of a bitch. Because any animal stupid enough to let me leave, get a weapon, come back, and still be there, deserves to die. And I came back and there he was, ah! So I hit him on the head hard, and the possum just went, ah! I was like, oh shit, I better go put some pants on. Uh, <laughs> I went inside, I put some pants on, I, I, I came back outside. Uh, guess who was waiting for me? The possum. But not only the possum, my shitty, Prius-driving, tree-hugging, organic-eating neighbor, Hollywood Nate, she was waiting for me. She never talks to me. I, I've been there a year and a half, I've said hi to her, I've waved at her, she never talks to me. She hates me, as a matter of fact, probably because I have a 1978 K5 Blazer. Yep, with a, 
with a 350 in that bitch. Uh, it gets nine miles to the gallon. Uh, I told her it's a hybrid. It burns gas and oil. And she, she, I walk over there and there she is over the fence. What's going on over here? I heard a shovel. I'm like, dang, lady, you really gotta be listening to hear a shovel. I said, there's a possum. And she goes, oh, you're not gonna kill it, are you? I said, no, ma'am, I have this shovel here to massage him. I said, yeah, I'm gonna kill him. She goes, don't do that. Call animal control. I said, lady, I'm from Texas. I am animal control. I go, you have any wild hogs here? She goes, no. I go, you're welcome. <laughs> she left, she left, she gave me that look, ugh. She left, I still had a possum to kill and, and hitting him on the head wasn't working. So I decided to choke that motherfucker out. <laughs> I took the shovel, I, took, I put it on his neck and I leaned on him and he was still talking, shh. <laughs> now he was going to sleep and I was like, you better tap out. He didn't, he died. And I put him on the end of my shovel to throw him in the street like a normal person. <laughs> Act like I don't know what the fuck happened. As I'm walking to the street, listen to this, Texas. As I'm walking to the street, two cop cars, four police officers, and an animal control vehicle rolled up on me. My neighbor had called the cops and they wrote me a ticket, $650, for killing a possum in my backyard. And I know, I know there's somebody in the room right now going, good, that's what you get. <laughs> and if you're one of those people, you listen to me, you piece of shit. <laughs> next time, next time you call the cops because uh, you're getting mugged or your house got broken into and you're wondering where those cops are. Well, they're with me, stupid, and my possum. <laughs> you know, doing important shit. $650, man. That wouldn't happen in Texas. If I was beating the shit out of a possum right here in South Texas, I'm pretty sure my neighbor would pop their head over the fence, but they'd probably say something like, you gonna eat that? <laughs> Come over and help like a real neighbor. With the weapons, here, shoot him in the face with this. <laughs> what is that, a nail gun? <laughs> well, you don't wanna wake everybody up. Uh, then they're gonna wanna eat too. I, <laughs> I am uh, proud to say I've lost 35 pounds this year. 30, yeah, 35. Those, uh, those of you that didn't clap, fuck you. Uh, you didn't clap because you have no idea how hard it is. I, uh, I am, I, I, it's hard, it is hard and I've been running. Because people come up to me, how did you do it? There's not a secret pill, I just ran. I fucking ran and I made my fat cry. I made my fat cry. And I, I cried a little bit too, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a large, I used to be in an extra large, I'm in a large. Yeah, I, uh, it's, a, it's a stand up large, I can't sit down yet, but I look good standing up. I, I look, it looks good standing up, I'm telling you. I, uh, I live in West Hollywood, so the gym I go to, they're all gay, a lot of gay. Big gay, man, big. I'm pretty sure they could fuck me if they wanted to. Uh, I've never worried as a grown man about getting raped, but I think, uh, I think now it's a possibility. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting raped, to be honest with you. Uh, that way, at least I know I have a nice body, you know? I, Steve, how do you know you're in good shape? Oh, my asshole hurts. Uh, I got raped. <laughs> you know how good you have to look to get raped by men? That would be amazing. That means there's some gay dude at my gym going, that son of a bitch. Every time he walks by in those yoga pants, that son of a bitch. <laughs> some of you wonder, you go, Steve, why do you work out at a, at a, at a gay gym? I'll tell you why, because I have a wife and my wife works out at that gym and I don't know if you've seen women's workout clothes, uh, but it's not clothes. 
Is it like they spray paint it on or, or it's like extra skin or something? My wife's like, I'm going to the gym. I'm like, really, honey, and that? You're going to wear that? Why don't you wear the bullshit you go to sleep in? Why don't you wear... <laughs> Why don't you wear those shitty sweats and that, that T-shirt, three sizes too big, the, the one with the pit stains and the hole in the side? Why can't I wear this? Because I can see your potato, honey. I can... Everybody can stare at your taquache, honey. You got it. She, it's not like I tell her what to do. My, you know, my wife, you know, she does whatever she wants. And I tell my wife, she goes, you're jealous. You don't want me to wear this outfit because you're jealous. No, I'm not jealous. I'm not. I, just, I know men. I know them. I'm one of them. And we're disgusting. And I'm telling you ladies right now, when you wear yoga pants, uh, we follow you. And we wait till you get on that machine like that. And you wait and you... And then we just stare at your potato. We just stare. <laughs> Sometimes my wife, she'll wear a shirt, no bra. She goes, this shirt doesn't need a bra. Well, fucking put one on. <laughs> why, because you're jealous? No, because men love free range titties. That's why. They're... If there's a woman that's sitting down right now that's not wearing a bra, we all know where you're sitting. We all know. There's a camera guy in the back going, did you see her? Did you see her? I put the camera on her. I put the kid. We're disgusting. I t I, uh, the other day I forgot, I was at the gym, at the gay gym, I forgot. And one of those girls in yoga pants was doing that, the whole potato in the air. And I was, I was looking, I was creepy. And I hit the guy next to me because he wasn't looking. I said, hey, hey, pay attention. He goes, oh yeah, I see him. I go, him, no, her, her, her. Oh, you're gay, man, you're really gay. That's what makes me realize you're, you're, you're born what you are. You're, you, don't, you don't choose to be gay. I'll give you an example. This is how men are. Let me give you an example. I shop with my wife, all right? I don't shop, really. I sit on the bench in the middle of the mall and my, my wife treats me like an eight-year-old. Wait here, wait right here. You better not leave, answer your phone. You better be right here. And I just sit there, I sit there, and there's always some other asshole sitting there. He's, we don't talk, there's nothing to say. We just sit there. The only time we make contact is when, we, when one of you girls walks by in yoga pants. That's the only time we're like, ah. And then we look at each other to make sure we both saw it. Ah. I didn't tell him, I didn't tell him, I didn't kick him. We just saw it. Because that's, you, you are what you are. I love tits. And I don't know why. I love them. I love them and I don't, I don't know. My wife goes, they're just fat. I go, yeah, but they're fat with nipples and they're awesome. <laughs> Sometimes we watch TV and my wife likes to lay in front of me on the sofa. I have to grab a tit. And my wife's like, are you serious? Yeah, I'm pretty serious right now. Oh. <laughs> That's why I got married, so I can grab tits whenever I want. That's why. I love them. And I... And some of you women, some of you women, you get insecure about your tits. And I'm telling you, as a man, don't. Do not. Some women, my tits are small. Uh, I would like to see them. I only have one tit. Can I see it? I would like... Uh... I'm an old lady, my titties sag. Ma'am, if you don't mind, I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, if an old lady came up to me and said, young man, would you like to see these old lady titties? I'd go, ugh, yes, yes, I would, yes, <laughs> yes. Make it quick, make it quick, my wife's coming, make it quick. Because <clears throat> my wife gives me that look, the, the, the pathetic look. Oh, you're just disgusting. I know what I like. I, I, know, I know what I like. Uh, and I tell you how I know I'm straight. I don't remember choosing to be a straight man. I just know that I am. You know why? Because I see tits and my dick says, go lie to her. <laughs> you should give her half your shit. <laughs> I'll tell you, a, a woman owns half my shit, not a man. And I'm pretty sure it's because she has a vagina. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 
Because I, I have seen dick. I've seen it. I have free range dick. I've seen it live. <laughs> football practice. In football, there would be one pole in the middle of the shower and shower heads. And we would all shower right there. And men would soap their dick right next to me. <laughs> and sometimes I would glance. I would glance <laughs> just to see what I'm up against. Uh, but never once have I glanced at one of those and said, hey, how can I get that in my mouth? Never once. Uh, because <laughs> I've seen men soap their dick and nothing happens, nothing. Actually, something happens. Actually, my dick goes inside my body. I get what I call a reverse boner and my penis hides from the other dicks like, what the fuck? Uh, Steve, don't we have a shower at the house? This is bullshit. <laughs> but, but I'm telling you right now, if there was soapy vaginas there, I would be lightheaded. That's what I'm saying. I... Because <laughs> ladies, I don't know what happens to you when you see dick. I don't know. You straight women, you see dick. Some, something happens, right? Maybe your mouth waters. I don't know. You got a little clit boner. I don't know, something. <laughs> get a little, get a little twitchy twat. <clears throat> I put my dick on women. I've done it. Slow dancing, I'll put my dick on them. And they, they don't, they don't, they don't take me off. They don't. And I'm telling you as a straight man, if a dick touches me just a little bit, just right there, fuck you, haircut's over. <laughs> I'll get up right there. <laughs> you ever get the huts? <laughs> hey man, your dick touched me right there. <laughs> I don't even know if it was your dick, but it was in the dick area. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, asshole. Uh, now I have to eat a hot dog with a fork and a knife. Uh. <laughs> I, have, I, have no, uh, I have no problem with the gays. I don't care. My motto is focus on yourself, and that's what I do. I focus on myself. That's what I do. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, the gays, they, they want to get married, which I think is stupid. I think it's dumb. Uh, no, because I'm married, and that's a fucking dumb idea. Uh, <laughs> You know how much I would have loved to be able... I wish it was illegal for us, too. <laughs> I would have loved to be able to look at my wife and go, we, we can't, babe. We, uh, <laughs> I, it's against the law, honey. It, it's, you can hang out here all you want, uh, but all this shit's still mine. <laughs> uh, I've been married a while now. I don't recommend it. I don't, it's hard. What marriage is, woo. Oh, some woman, yes, it is, it is. <laughs> it, what marriage is uh, maybe the hardest thing I've ever done. I, and, and I love my wife, that's why I married her, but motherfucker, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes I pass her in the hallway and I just go, fuck you. <laughs> Not out loud in my head, you know what I mean? Like, you, you piece of shit. What kind of animal squeezes the toothpaste from the middle? What kind of piece of shit? Oh, you laugh, but every morning I wake up to a big fuck you to me. Every morning. I tell her, I tell her, I tell her I hate it, but to, and I, uh, fuck you, there it is. I respect my wife and her pet peeves. I respect them. She wants me to take out the trash, I take it out. Even though I know all I gotta do is push it down. <laughs> but mine, all oh, the toothpaste, every morning, fuck you! <laughs> I tell her, I go, you roll it, you roll it, you, you, you push it and you roll it. And I'll beg, sometimes I beg her, sometimes I beg my wife, baby, please, baby, it drives me crazy. Can you just, uh, honey, if you could, please, I beg, I beg. And then the next morning, fuck you, there it is. <laughs> And I'll lose it. I'll lose my shit. You motherfucking shit! Don't And my wife will go, okay, that came out of nowhere. 
And she'll throw the toothpaste away. She'll just throw it away. She doesn't pinch the corners. You pinch the corners. That's, <laughs> that's, what, I, that's what I use every morning. I have a drawer of unpinched corners that I use. Because I guess to my wife, toothpaste is free. I guess it's fucking free. <laughs> I, never thought, I never thought I would grow up to be a pinch the corner guy. I never thought... My dad's, my dad's a pinch the corner guy and me and my sisters would sit on the couch and my dad on a Saturday would come in, what do you pinch the corner? Does this look done to you? <laughs> me and my sister would be like, what the fuck, what's wrong with him? <laughs> now that's me, now I'm the guy. My dad used to walk around the house, turning off lights, talking to himself. I guess we're rich, I guess we're rich. Who's gonna pay? Who's gonna pay? I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay. I guess I'm gonna pay. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. I used to think he was crazy. Now I'm that asshole walking around my house. Nobody's even home, just by myself. I guess we're rich. I guess we're rich. <laughs> but you do it, man. You, you get married and wow. They're expensive, man. Women, whew. I thought, I thought they were born beautiful. That is not the case. Uh, all you single men in this audience, you listen to daddy. Listen to me good. You see a woman with highlights, run. That bitch is expensive. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. God, God did not put highlights in her head. A gay man did. <laughs> and he knows more about your wife than you do. Uh, I, look at me, I, co I cost nothing, nothing. Sometimes I, I go months, nothing. <laughs> My wife, something, something. The toes, the something, that costs money, it costs money. <laughs> oh yeah, she, every week she goes to a Chinese lady, pays her $50 to rip the hairs off of her vagina. <laughs> the Chinese lady sees her pussy more than me. And it comes back red and beat up. I don't even do that to it. I... She... she says it's for me. I do it for you. That... Really? Because I can do it hairy. I don't have a problem. I, I used to in high school. I know what I'm doing. Uh... You let me do it in the winter. I don't see what the problem is. Uh... You want to do something for me, uh, let it grow out. Save me $50 a week. But you gotta be a man, you grow up to be, it's tough, man, it is tough. I don't even drive the nice car. I don't drive the nice car. My wife drives the nice car. I, I drive the shit car, that's my car, the shit one. <laughs> my wife doesn't care that it's brand new. I don't drive her car, sometimes, sometimes I drive it. Every once in a while, and every time, no gas, no fucking gas, every time. <laughs> every time I get in the car, beep, beep, are you fucking kidding me right now? I put eight dollars. <laughs> That's a gallon and a half. Can you do it? You know I will. You know I will. <laughs> does my wife? Does my wife care that it's a new car? Does she give a shit? No, she doesn't. She's wrecked it eight times. That's not the funny part. On the same spot, in the same spot of the garage. She doesn't care. Pff, oh my God. Pff, oh shit. Pff, I did it again. Uh-oh, I don't know how I did that. I, I don't either, the garage doesn't move. I, it, it's, it's there every day, same garage. Same, uh, I even hung a tennis ball in there uh, to tell you when to stop, but apparently I don't, I don't do anything right, so fuck it, drive to the back. Drive to the back. Oh, I walked outside the other day, the fender, gone, gone, just gone. I said, honey, well, you were gonna tell me? Oh my God. You didn't see? I don't know where that happened. Maybe it happened in the garage where it's hanging. Maybe that's where it happened. <laughs> we're best friends, right? No, no, we're not best friends. Because my best friend wouldn't do that shit. My best friend's not gonna wreck my car, much less do it seven more times. And if my best friend did wreck my car, he would feel like shit. Because he's a person. And he would call me outside and go, Steve, I wrecked your car and I feel horrible, I'm gonna get it fixed, I'm sorry. 
and I can see that you're upset right now, and if I was a woman to make you feel better, I would suck your dick. <laughs> He's my best friend. He knows that's my favorite. <laughs> you say we're best friends, honey. We'll be a pal. Can you be a bud? <laughs> oh, laugh it up. All you single guys get married. They stop. They stop. I used to get them. I used, oh, she'd murder it. She'd murder it. Oh, man, when we were dating like a porn star. Ah! With work ethic. She had work ethic. We're married now. Now she does it like somebody's holding a gun to her head. How long do I have to do this? <laughs> well, a little longer now, honey. Uh, you took something that involves no talking, but somehow we're having a conversation. It's a job, honey, blow job. It says it right there in the title. <laughs> it's not blow fun, it's not blow vacation. So get down there, close your eyes, hold your breath, clock in and go to work. I don't know who Louis Vuitton is, but if I ever meet him, I'm gonna punch him in the throat. And you gotta encourage, you gotta encourage. She wants a bag, oh yeah, baby, yeah, get that one. Oh yeah, it's a different kind of black, I can see that. Oh, brown, we don't have enough brown ones. Get another one, baby, let's get. Shoes and bags, that's what we need. Who needs a savings account? Shoes and bags, we got this shit. That way when the economy goes to shit, we have something to trade, honey, that's a good job. Louis Vuitton and Michael Kors. There's a new bitch in town, Rebecca. I know them all. I should not, but I do. I know them all. I, uh, here's, here's my biggest problem with being married is the fact that my wife makes the rules but doesn't have to follow them. If, uh, yeah, if, if she wants to hang out with her friends, uh, she just does. There's no conversation. She just wakes up and leaves and I'm at home scared because I don't know what I'm supposed to do. She didn't leave a list. I don't know what to wear. <laughs> There's no food. What am I going to do? I can't, I, can't, I can't hang out with my friends uh, without having... Uh, there's paperwork involved. Uh, I got to have a meeting, a sales pitch. I got to put together a slideshow. Thanks for coming, babe. Uh, on this first slide, you'll see I've been taking my lunch to work. <laughs> and I've managed to save $30. Uh, on this next slide, you'll see a coupon for golf, which I would like to use on myself. Golf balls, you say? No, I'm not going to buy any. I'm going to stomp through the forest like an asshole. <laughs> see if I can't find some. Can't call my wife. Can't call her when she's with her friends. If I call her, I get what, what, what? That's if she answers, what, what? We're busy, what? In the history of nail salons, you've never seen women outside of those nail salons on the phone. You've never seen it. But every bar in America, there's a man underneath a tree. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't even know what I did, but I'm sorry. I, I was gonna have one more beer. No, I don't need another beer. Fuck it, I'm coming home. Who needs friends, honey? I'm coming home. Fuck them. <laughs> That's if my wife answers the phone. Sometimes she doesn't answer. Sometimes she doesn't even answer. And I'm calling and texting, and I'm pissed. I'm ready to kill another. I'll kill her. I'm pissed. And she comes home, and I go, answer the phone! And she'll go, uh, what? You, you were trying to call me? And she looks at her phone. <laughs> I had it off. If I had my phone off for four hours while I was with my friends, are you fucking kidding me? I would get home to the police and my parents and her parents and her grandparents and my dead grandparents. And they'd all be there and they'd all be scolding me. How dare you do that to her? She was worried about you, you piece of shit. What kind of a man doesn't answer his phone, you piece of shit? Shit! That's why that's why I don't hang out with single guys. Single men, you don't get it. You think you're a man, you're not a, you're not a man. 
All you got to do is take care of yourself. You don't even do that well. You're not a man until you have a woman telling you what to do. You want, you want to learn about patience and how not to kill another human being. You get married. If I play golf with my single friends and my wife calls and I answer, my single friend's like, pussy. <laughs> my married friends are like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> hey, do what you got to do. Uh, just, just let us know if we got to go. Uh, <laughs> oh, she'll call. She'll call. She'll call, and you better answer. You can't go, what, what, what? You have to, you have to talk. You have to solve her problem, whatever it is. Whatever her problem is, you have to solve it. You have to be a man. And it's always something stupid. It's always some bullshit. I'll be playing golf and here it comes. Hello? Yeah, honey. No, I remember? I, you approved it. You... I'm playing golf, baby girl. What could I do for you? What? You, you need to play a DVD. <laughs> you don't know how to play a DVD. I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> All right, baby, well, I'll fix it when I'm done. No, we'll take care of it right now. Yeah. Oh, who needs to hang out with these other three guys? Fuck them. Yeah. <sighs> TV input, honey. Maybe you should let me talk. Uh, you asked me for help, remember? On the, on the remote, baby, TV input. On, uh, on the remote control, you don't see the remote control? TV, I'm not yelling, I'm not yelling at you. No. It says TV input, baby, HDMI. What remote are you using? Yeah, that remote doesn't do shit. Oh, why are you mad at me? You're the one that called me. I'm standing under the train right now. Hello? Hello? Oh shit, I gotta go. Oh, she, she, wants, she wants to play a DVD. And my wife can shop. That woman can shop. All day, all the time. That woman can, she gets home, Pinterest, Pinterest, Pinterest. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. What do you think of this? Look at this, what about this? I don't give a shit. She'll shop all day, all day. She'll come home with 30 bags on a Saturday, 30. And we have to play Price is Right. <laughs> She'll pull an item out. Okay. How much do you think actual retail price? <laughs> I don't give a shit. No, serious, babe. Actual, okay, how much actual retail price? I used to love Price is Right, and you, you killed it. You killed it for me. I hate that game. <laughs> no, ask me. Okay, how much did I pay? How much did I pay? Uh, how, much did I, how much did I I don't give a shit! Three dollars. I got that for three dollars. I got it. Three dollars. I hit it. I hit it, and I came back, and I got it for three dollars. <laughs> she comes home with all the bags, and she lays all the stuff out in the living room. She has to lay it out. And then she has to tell me everything about everything. She turns into an auctioneer. Uh, let me tell you what I went over to Macy's. Went over to Macy's, got 30% off, had another 20% off, got 10% off, $7 right there. I got that over at Macy's, got that 40% off right there. Let me tell you what I got over here. Went over to the, went over to the North Shore, went over to the North Shore, got that over the North Shore, went over there, we got that over there. Went the North Shore, over here. Let me tell you what I got over here. Two for one, one for two, two for one, one for two. I got four pairs of shoes for the price of one. All this right here for $35 to this sassy bitch right here. Yeah. Thirty-five bucks. That's that's good, baby. Now, how much did we spend? You have to ask. They won't tell you. You have to ask. If you don't ask, you don't get an answer. You have to ask. How much? Tell me how much. Four hundred. You got all that? How did you spend four hundred dollars? Well, these shoes. We're a million dollars. <laughs> Shut 